Hello, my name is Nari Creed. I'm the Director of Communications at the AIIA, and it is my great pleasure to be at the Australian War Memorial today in front of this wonderful diorama of Lone Pine uh, with Ashley Eakins, who is the head of the mil military history section at the War Memorial. Ashley, thank That's you very right. much for joining me today. Thank you, Nari. Ashley, the Battle of Lone Pine lasted four days. It must have been ferocious. It was unimaginably savage. Um, they, they captured this bit of ground. They charged across, as you see in the diorama, this ground they ran across and came out of tunnels towards, perhaps at its widest, 120 metres. They, they ran that within less than a minute and had occupied the trenches within the first half an hour. Uh, they had secured the position probably within an hour and then the fighting went on for four days and nights. The, the, the diorama here shows the Turks in their trenches underneath them. How did that work? They had covered the trenches with heavy pine logs. Some of them are here in front of the diorama. Uh, those, those logs and then heavy earth on top, they had tried to turn them into what we would have called in a later war, bunkers, uh, with firing slits from the front of them. The Australians didn't know this. Although there'd been aerial reconnaissance and uh, maps had been drawn before the battle, they had no idea that what they were charging was almost impenetrable. Luckily, there were a few openings that had been made in the top of the uh, trenches, in the top of the covering, the overhead covering, by earlier artillery fire. Some of them went around the back, ran past the trenches. They'd been trained to do this, to leave the front line trench and to go to the rear. Some of them did that. Some went so far, they were either killed or captured by the Turks who were occupying uh, a much more dense area of entrenchments in an area known as the Cup, which they didn't know about. But they certainly didn't know the trenches were covered until they arrived there. So that would have come as a terrible shock. They couldn't just immediately occupy the trenches. It was unfortunate in a way for the Turks as well because they found themselves trapped in their own trenches. In, they had retreated back into the tunnels and the deeper recesses of the galleries uh, in these trenches to escape the earlier gunfire, the, naval, the uh, shell fire from the ships and from the artillery guns. So many of them were trapped in there, which meant, in fact, with the bottled up Turkish soldiers, Ottoman soldiers inside their trenches and the Australians fighting in the dark, it became an absolute hellhole over the next as I say, three, four days and three nights. Uh, and it was incessant because the Turks kept mounting counterattacks to try and capture back this piece of ground. We'll never know why, because it was of no advantage to them uh, to have that bit of ground, but they wouldn't relinquish an inch. Uh, and the fighting went on until on the 10th and the morning of the 10th, it finally subsided, 10th of August. And the, the, in fact, the line all the way along the Anzac front line went quiet after four days of attacks in various places. Lone Pine was only the beginning. It was a diversionary attack to try and hold the Turkish reserves here at this position. It worked well initially because it called up reserves from down into the south at the Hellas area. But once the Turks realized this was not a real attack, it actually worked against the Australians because the, uh, the Turkish reserves were there to send to the north where the main thrust was going in. But this fighting nevertheless went on for the next four days and nights. And it was unbelievably savage in the extreme. It was fighting with bombs and bayonets, fists, clubs, hand-to-hand, -hand, close quarters combat of the most savage kind. How many did we lose and how many did they lose? Australian losses have put at about 2,300, of whom over 800 were killed. The rest wounded, and some would have died later of those wounds. Turkish losses were staggering, well over 6,000, of whom 1,500 were killed. So double the number of dead and uh, probably three times the number of overall casualties. Uh, it was a savage battle, and it became a measure in the Australian forces for years afterwards of how bad a battle could be. It's at the top of a hill. I mean, was it a kind of madness on both sides to stage a battle there? It was, according to the commander of the 1st Division, who was given this task, um, Brigadier General Harold, Harold Walker, and a very fine commander, uh, it was a madness. He argued against this attack from the beginning. Uh, all he got was a postponement by a couple of hours so that the Australians were actually attacking with the sun behind them, as you see, so the sun was in the Turks' eyes, gave them some slight advantage. But no, it was, uh, it was an attack against a high feature, as you say, not actually a hill, it's a plateau. 400 Plateau sits 400 feet above sea level, but it was at the southern end of 400 Plateau that the Turks had built this most heavily fortified position 
it was probably their strongest position on the entire Anzac frontline area, and we chose to attack it because it was believed that this would hold the Turks there. They wouldn't relinquish such a strongly held position. That proved to be true, but the idea of a diversion that would keep their reserves there proved completely uh, false. You've, you've been to Lone Pine on Anzac Day, yes, and you've seen the number of Australians who are there. Does it hold a special place, do you think, in uh, the Australians' sense of history? Yes, it, it should hold a special place to, to all Australians. I mean, it's, the cemetery is built on the ground that the Australians charged over in that first mad minute or two to capture those trenches. Uh, there are 1,200 graves there. 500 of them are unidentified. We'll never know who they are. They're uh, just completely missing in action, but the graves are there of, of men known to be in the, in the uh, gravesite. But more compelling, I think, is the fact that the big pylon that stands there, where the ceremonies are held every year and will be held this year on the centenary, that pylon marks the uh, marking point of the missing of the Gallipoli campaign. And almost half of the 8,709 Australians who died, are, their names are marked on that wall because they have no known graves. So that makes it a very special place for Australians to visit. Many who can never visit a grave will at least find the name of their loved one there, either killed, lost in action, uh, or buried at sea, as some 900 were. Uh, what Australians who visit there should also see, though, and many don't, I think, is that uh, where that pylon stands, we actually dispossessed a little Turkish memorial that stood there after the campaign. They named this place Kandlaset, or Bloody Ridge, for very good reason. Their losses were huge. And there is a small memorial just adjacent to this one, but down the road and across the road is the Turkish memorial, which marks their staggering losses in this campaign too. It was costly for both sides. And it achieved, in the end, nothing for both sides. The Australians got a little bit of territory, a bit of real estate that was a liability for the rest of the campaign because it was observable. Everything they did was observable on that ground from several high Turkish points that actually captured a piece of land that became a hellhole. No man could show his head above the ground there. Do you think that the Battle of Lone Pine is overwhelmed in some cases by the commemorations and the focus on Anzac Cove? Unfortunately, 25th of April being the first day Australian troops went into action and being celebrated as it was by one particular war correspondent, but then subsequently in many books, uh, it became the making of the legend. And that will always be the day that we mark as the, the day uh, of, that celebrates the Anzac spirit and the Anzac legend and so on. But there's more to the story than that. And I, I would hope most Australians would come to realise that this was an eight month long campaign. Those men who served, some 16,000 landed on the first day, but over 60,000 probably served in the Gallipoli campaign. We'll never know the exact number. Uh, they should remember that this campaign dragged on for months and the real achievement wasn't actually that landing. The, the fighting that went on continuously was their story. It was hanging on through terrible conditions on Gallipoli. Uh, and this high point where they finally tried to break the stalemate and break out of the Anzac uh, uh, stronghold the Turks had built around them, in fact, on the heights. That achievement, three months after they landed, was done by men who were by then sick with dysentery. They were exhausted through hard, heavy labour, digging trenches and so on, poor food, malnutrition, disease, and incredibly tired. These men rallied when they were told there was going to be a major offensive and they might break out of this campaign, break out of this, uh, this deadlock at last. Um, they managed to rally and, and launch attacks like this at Lone Pine. This is the epic part of the story. Uh, and then they were able to survive, those that survived this, were able to then hang on for another four months through a long, drawn-out wind-down uh, that would have exhausted men colossally. So it's a long story. It's not just a, the day of a landing, the 25th of April. It is a long story that runs from the 25th of April to the 20th of December for Australians. And we should remember all these points, but particularly this August offensive, when the, the heaviest casualties were incurred, the biggest battles happened, uh, and some of the most epic events. Seven VCs were awarded to Australians for this action. That was unheralded until 1918, when the same number was repeated in Mont Saint Quentin on the Western Front. But uh, seven VCs for bravery that was everywhere in display over those four days. Ashley, thank you very much for talking today to the AAA. My pleasure, Nari.